Welcome to Failed It. O-M-G. Rosie. (laughs) Welcome to the Failed It podcast. Thank you so much, Erin Deal. I am so honored. I am so honored to have you here. And (laughs) I know the Failed It family, which, fun fact, Failed It family, we are going to be doing a rebrand. I was just telling Rosie. More on that later. So your name may change. But this podcast, you're going to love it. You're You're just going to love it. It's going to blow your mind. It's going to blow your mind. But, Rosie, tell the, the, the fam, the Failed It fam for now. How you came to improve it. Rosie is one of our lead facilitators here. And how you started out as a lead facilitator. Well, failed it, fam. Patent pending. Change (laughs) coming. Um, I, um, wow, how did I come to the Improve It family? I um, knew Christy first and foremost. So Christy's one of the like, I mean, I'm sure you've talked about Christy on here before, but um, has she been a guest? Now I'm just all over the place. She, she was a guest. She was she a is. guest. Great, great. So to go ahead and listen to that episode just to learn what she does. Um, but through the improv world and, uh, she told me about this company and I was like, um, yes, hello, I would like to do it. And like, I think even in my interview, I was like, if you ever are looking for lead people, like I would love to. So I just, um, was a fan and then I got the chance to interview and was hired and I'm so lucky and grateful. Stop, keep going. And we, no, we are the lucky ones. As you can hear, she is one of the best of the best people on the planet. I say this like with kind. the most sincerity because I, oh. I, I truly do feel so lucky that we have this team of amazing people that we get to play and hang out with and work with. And I, I said agree. to her, we're doing a workshop right after this. And I was like, Rosie, I get to hang out with you all afternoon, which makes me smile from ear oh, to ear. The best. It, it's always fun and ever it really doesn't feel like work which sounds so cheesy but it it's like the most fun and most energetic and and most lovely thing stop i know thanks I to you like... erin deal it's okay what you do. okay well i really honestly could not do this without you without our team of rock stars <laughs> it's so true. Let, but i want to i want you to tell us a little bit about improv for you why did you choose improv as your life's work and you actually came from corporate america and left corporate to do this full time yeah i did um i i fell in love with improv in high school um when i got this like new theater teacher like we'd had the same theater teacher and we all loved her and she was like you know we we were like whoever this new person is we're gonna hate her Loved her too. She came with a background from Second City and like blew our minds with like improv. And we, she cast a sketch show and there was, it was six women and we improvised and and wrote the show together. And from that show, I was like, I'm moving to Chicago. I got to do this thing. (laughs) And then I came to Chicago and it just continued to blow my mind. It's not at all what I thought it would be. I didn't pursue improv in the way that I thought I would. Um, and I ended up in a place that I never thought I'd be. So I, you know, I'm, I'm grateful. And I know we'll talk about this to the yes and idea because I'm, this is not, this is not necessarily what I planned. And I'm so happy that this is how it's turned out. But long answer um, in high school is the short answer. Okay. I love that because yeah. you, and when you watch Rosie perform, Failed it, fam. So we just did two. We actually had two laugh breaks to this. Today's a crazy day. We're recording this Today's show. Crazy. Today's crazy. I hosted a laugh break. You just got off a laugh break, yeah. and then we're doing a workshop right after this, which is awesome. Yeah. Um, and you know, it's it's this feeling that you can't describe. These things only happen one time. And I'll tell yeah. you what: in our laugh break, while you were hosting one, I was hosting the other. I had tears. In my eyes, I couldn't physically talk because my Garrity had made me cry laughing so oh, hard. I'm not surprised. And, and if I if I talk about it, you you know, you what I repeat what happened, it doesn't sound as funny, but in that no. moment, it's hysterical. And we can never yeah. relive it. And that's what it's happened true. with you though. It's like this this 
world surprised you and it took you on this journey. It took you through corporate America because you actually used to be in recruiting at Groupon and, yeah. and you came from that and said, I am so passionate about improv. I'm going to do this full time. So yeah, I know you work a lot with our, our, our clients and our leaders. What are two things you are, you would say you see trending in leaders today? What, what do you think are on our clients' minds? Yeah. I mean, when I was, you know, full-time in corporate America and, um, was, was really entrenched in that, you know, being in recruiting, I got to talk all to all different kinds of leaders. And I think, um, a trend that was even beginning then is, is this idea of your workers having a life and that being okay. And I think with the pandemic, it has made it very clear that we can juggle and balance these things of, you know, work-life balance, but, but in a real way in a, okay, we're starting to acknowledge that these things are true um, and having the accessibility, having the understanding and the acknowledgement of lives outside of the job, because that's what makes us better. You know, those experiences and those things externally are what make us even better employees. I mean, I always found that <laughs> even in my own work, you know, I've, I found my ability to pivot, to use improv, to use yes and, but even just that I had this kind of fruitful and, and full life outside of the job to just be able to bring so much more to it. And I think that that true acknowledgement is happening across all levels of corporate America, which I find amazing. I do too. It's so refreshing. It really yeah. is. And it's like this work-life blend, you know, yes. it's not a balance, it's a blend. And I think yes. we're seeing that as people are thinking about going back to the office, as they're mm -hmm. thinking about staying at home, people's lives were opened up and, you know, their lives really were behind them and on screen, on camera for the past year. And you and I, I think have really, and, and everybody on the Improve It team really has this whole concept in our mind of just being our true selves, bringing our true selves to work right. and allowing that to fuel us. Because when we feel heard, that's when we want to show up more. So I want you to talk to us when you alluded to this a little bit about this concept of yes and, because creating a safe space for people going back into the office is so important. Creating a safe space for those who choose to continue to work at home because a lot of people still aren't comfortable going back Definitely. into the office right now. So yeah. what would you say are some tangible steps on how the field at VAM can use Yes And to create a safe space for their teams, whether they're at home or they're continuing to figure out a way to safely go back to work? Yeah. My favorite thing when describing yes and is that you can say no. Like saying no is part of saying yes and. So the example that I like to give is, you know, when we use it on stage, it's it's a very clear message, right? If I say, doctor, hand me the scalpel, and you say, I'm a veterinarian and this is a cat, like you have just <laughs> said no. <laughs> yep. You've said no to the idea. You've said no to my very existence, basically, of to the world that I've created. So to say yes and is you can say, uh, I can say, doctor, hand me the scalpel. And you can say, no, I think you need to stitch it up, right? You have said yes to the idea, even though you use the word no. So I think it is allowing yourself to breathe within this space, to breathe and say yes to the circumstances that you're in, and then adding your own voice to it, being a part of the and, being part of the creativity that comes forward. Because the resistance and the denial of, I'm not going to do that, or no, this isn't happening, that's that's what really creates, I think, that that tough push and pull and, and more of um, the the kind of sticky situations where we don't feel so great. So I think it is first the acknowledgement and then being able to envision new and creative ways to approach this. You know, I think in every work situation, it really comes down to the approach and what we're willing to, uh, I guess, get creative with, right? There's not ever one answer. And working as an individual is going to have way different results versus when we collaborate. So using using the idea of 
I accept the position that we're in. I'm going to add my voice and I'm going to be open to hearing, I think, what other people have to say. I think just also helps with that work blend, right? We, we can be ourselves and allow others to be themselves and let those, those truths all kind of mix together. I'm going to do this. That's a mic drop. Did you hear my mic drop? <laughs> um, okay, thank you. Thank you. It was a pen. It was a pen drop, but I it was a mic drop. A little light for a mic. Yeah, it's but, a little. Let know. me see. Let me see. Here we go. Oh nope, that was my phone. Whoa. Okay, okay. Whoa. Don't okay. do that. Don't, Aaron. Yes, I know. Sorry not for the for, bit. Be careful. For, I know. You're right. You're right. I do need that. Um, <laughs> so okay, let's just say this. Yes, Ian is literally how we as improvisers communicate. I love right. this too. You feel this too. And we have trips that take us outside of the city, which we, we all live in Chicago. I now don't live in Chicago, but when we all travel together, it's mm -hmm. this constant feeling of yes, anding each other, which is mm -hmm. heightening what's being said. And mm -hmm. it's like, you just said, you said you can say no, but it doesn't negate. It just builds. Right. And so leaders failed at family. If you are listening today and you are feeling like you are just not getting anywhere, that productivity is stifled, that you are sitting in just stagnancy. If you are just sitting still and the work is getting squashed, here is a tangible thing you can do. So Rosie, will you lead us just in a yes and brainstorm? So let's say um, we're brainstorming our, let's do our back to work little happy hour we're doing mm -hmm. in August. Okay. Yes. So how can we yes and this so we can come up with a great venue, a great food option, um, and then some entertainment. Because I, I know some people who entertain people. Um, but how, how can we yes and the crap out of this to come up with some good ideas? I think we we take any any nose off the table for this, right? When we're talking about brainstorming and ideation, just let it all flow. There's There's no boundaries, right? So you and I do not have to adhere to any of those sticky things that would, would sit, make us go, oh, this is so hard. Let's just let all the ideas flow and just yes and. Let's you want to try it? it? All right. Let's, let's do, do it. it. All right. Here we go. I'll go. I'll go. Yeah, start us off. Okay. Yes, and Rosie, um, I'm so excited for this party. We are going to actually fly in pink. I just watched her documentary on Amazon Prime and I'm obsessed. So I'm so excited. <laughs> Yes. And uh, we will all be able to party at a, a private mansion. So we can still hang out with Pink, but then we all get our own space and can kind of like, you know, intermingle and go off to different places. Yes. And every room has a different food group item. Okay. With multiple dipping sauces for any, you know, any chicken nuggets or veggie chicken nuggets or fish sticks for the pescatarian. Yes. And each of those rooms has a slide that goes out of the window into the giant pool in the center of the courtyard. Yes. And in the pool, everyone gets their own floaty. If you want a unicorn floaty, you get a unicorn floaty. If and you, you get a unicorn floaty. And you, and get, you a get a unicorn floaty. <laughs> <laughs> so, okay. From this we could take maybe one idea to, I mean, all of these are very extravagant ideas, but the goal, right, is to just allow ourselves to dream big because maybe we decide we want to do a pool party from this. And exactly. It's what are we hearing? What are we excited about? So like, we like more modern music, right? You didn't say that we're, we're having a jazz star come in. So we think, okay, that's, that's kind of the music that excites us. We, we want, you know, food that can satisfy all different types, not just one thing, you know, maybe it's going to be hot. So kind of taking <laughs> the things that naturally came up and letting them guide us. That's it. And that's for you, Failed It family listening today. This may sound crazy. How in the world are we going to do anything using Yes And when we're talking about pink and unicorn floaties? I'm going to tell you just what Rosie said. The theme from this is exactly what you're looking for. So if you allow your team to go big, you can pull from that big and get a little bit more realistic and fine tune it. But the goal is to allow everyone to share ideas and to not let anybody's idea feel squashed. Yes. So try it. We love it. It's yours. We love Take it. it. It's the no Take that it. hurts, right? <laughs> so instead of finding what doesn't work, let's look for what does. Oh, well, I'll tell you what works. 
you and my life, Rosie Moan, and <laughs> you coming on this yes, show. Yes, and you <laughs> in my life. So lucky. Oh, so, so lucky. Blessed. Thanks for joining us on this mini sewed Rosie Moan, and to True the pleasure. failed it family. Fail. Yeah. Bye. Fail, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Hey friends, thanks for tuning in to Failed It. I am so happy you were along for the ride. If you enjoyed this show, please head on over to iTunes, leave us a five-star review, and subscribe to the show so you never miss an episode. New episodes drop every Wednesday. Now, if you're really feeling today's show, please take a screenshot and tag me on Instagram at Keeping It Real Deal and share it to your stories so we can bring more people to the Failed It family. I'll see you next week, but I want to leave you with this thought. What will you fail at today and how will that help your future successful self? Think about it. I'm so proud of you and you are totally failing it. See you next time.